guys, Molly here, and, um, I apologize for the shitty lighting, it is almost 11 o'clock night here, and by the time you guys see this, it's gonna be a couple days old, um, I'm not fixing the lighting issue, <laughs> you can deal with a pale version of me, um, but with it being BTS's anniversary, when I post this video, um, I wanted to do the story of how I became ARMY, and it's actually quite a sad story. Um, I recommend a tissue, because <laughs> I'm probably going to be crying, um, and I'm going to do a trigger warning. Um, if the talk of cancer and the death of a parent trigger you in any sort of way, do not watch this video, please. Um, <laughs> I know certain things can trigger certain people. This isn't, isn't triggering for me, even though I've lived it. Um, take care of yourself. And I, I am also wearing the shirt that I wore in my um, vlog you saw on Saturday because I realized um, <laughs> when I went to get ready for bed. Uh, the shirt I was gonna wear, which is right here, um, actually had my school stain right across it, and I- you don't need to know where I live. <laughs> I don't need stalkers, please. No stalkers. Um, so, I would like to preface this by saying that there have been three times before I actually became ARMY and found out what K-pop actually was. That I could have been standing BTS. <laughs> you know, I think pretty much almost any army who haven't been following them since debut feel the same way that I do sometimes. It's like, oh, I could have, like, I was introduced to them before and I could have been standing them way longer than I have. But let's go with it's summer of 2015. I am fixated on this one stage from Ailey, Jesse, and Hyolin? Ho Holin? I can't remember how to pronounce her name, I'm so sorry. And is the cover of Bang Bang. So I'm like obsessing over this cover because I just think it's really good. And I love like Ailey's voice and um the other girl's voice. I can't, I can't remember how to pronounce her name. I'm so sorry. Not that my brain could honestly function. <laughs> you guys know this. Um, and while I was looking through the recommendations, there was a video was like right at the top. And at the time, there was no English on it. Um, they didn't even say dope on it. And it didn't even have like English subtitles. So like, this was maybe a few weeks maybe sometime in July that I saw the video of Dope and I accidentally clicked on it um, and I was like okay you know what I'm gonna watch the video because it's like maybe like 1 30 in the morning I'm bored I'm getting sleepy let's just watch your video I watch it and I fall in love with it to telling my telling myself to remember this music video in the morning knowing there's no English attached to it I don't even think it said, like, BTS on it. I think it just was in Korean. And, you know, I'm this stupid person and I have my history turned off because I don't like knowing when I search anymore um, because sometimes it's a little weird. So I didn't have my history on. Morning comes, I can't remember the music video. I can't remember anything about it. And I'm like, you motherfucker, you should have written it down in your notebook. So that leads me to December 15th of 2017, and I looked this up before filming, and one of my favorite groups of all time is Fall Out Boy, and they release a remix of their song Champion with RM. I didn't know it was BTS, and I went, oh, this, cover, this remix is amazing, it's one of my favorite remixes that 
has been done. It is so good if you have not listened to it. Even if you're not ARMY, because it's so good. I love the remix so much. Or I'm really add something to the, to, the, to the song. And you know what? I looked up the group. Didn't think about looking up their music. And then just moved right along. That leads me to December 31st, 2017. They're performing on Dick Clark's. Technically performing on Dick Clark's. It's a um, recording um, from, I think, when they were in Vegas, maybe for the AMAs or the BM BBMAs. I don't remember which one it was. But I know it was, it was either Mic Drop or DNA. I can't remember, but it was during that era. And my mom didn't want to watch Dick Clark. She wanted to watch Steve Harvey's um, uh, special instead. So that's what we watched. So Steve Harvey never actually like introduced BTS to me at all. Like that was all Dick Clark. And I never, I didn't see it. I didn't turn it back on until closer to the when the ball was dropping that night that year. So that leads me to February 9th. 2018. My best friend at the time, we are no longer best friends, um, just gonna throw that out there. She texts me, it's her birthday, and she goes, Molly, I need you to obsess over something. And I was like, well, that's kind of simple for me. Um, for those who don't know, I am autistic. We have hyperfixations on a lot of things. A lot of people do, but the autism, you have hyperfixations on a lot of things, and it's very easy for me to hyperfixate on something. So I was like, you know that's not going to be difficult for me. And she goes, oh, I know, but I need someone to obsess with, be obsessed with as much as I am. I'm like, how obsessed are you? And she's like, I've been listening to their music for the past, like, three days. I'm like, okay, um, who are they? And she goes, BTS. And I'm like, don't know them. And she's like, they're K-pop. I'm like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, why does that seem? like familiar and I was like is that that Psy guy you know of like Gundam style the horse dance if you want to be the meme part of it and she's like wait was that K-pop and I look it up it, it was um and she's like oh didn't know that was K-pop but yes they're K-pop and they're better I was like okay so she starts she knows that I'm like hesitating and then she's like okay I'm gonna send you gifs and she starts sending me gifs of literally all the members and the first one that sticks out to me is jungkook and it's him in the dope music video with him in the like police uniform and i was like hmm that looks familiar and i was like okay send me whatever video you're currently watching and she goes okay i'm gonna send you this video i click on the video and i'm not even about like 20 seconds into the video and i already have a pause because i'm looking at rm and obviously now there are subtitles and this is like first time with BTS and I just kind of look at him and I'm like why does this voice first of all why does this voice sound familiar and why does this music video sound familiar so I can just hit play again and then Jungkook you know comes out of nowhere and I pause again and I'm like oh my god I kid you like I kid you not it was the exact same music video from 2015 I start freaking out with Rebecca I'm going you won't believe this do you remember in back in 2015 when I told you about this song and group that I found by accident? She goes, you do realize that I don't have a brain like yours. I'm like, point taken, but do you remember? And she goes, vaguely. I'm like, this is the group. She goes, what, what are you talking about? I'm like, this is the music video. This is the music video. Dope is the music video that I saw that night telling myself to remember it for the next morning. Still killing myself that I didn't do that. Or I would have been able to see for Celeb Live. And she goes, you're joking, right? I'm like, nope, nope, nope. And she's like, so we could have been fans of BTS for a lot longer than this? And I'm like, well, when you put it like that, thank you. Um, and I just obsess, just like she asks. Like, I, am, I looked on my Instagram and I saw, like, I was posting like um picture a picture of my playlist on instagram about bts and at the time there's only like six songs on the list 
and just saying like never been into k-pop this is my first time i'm still learning i'm taking it slow but i'm in love like i'm in love and it was just like everything with bts unknowingly to me there is a phrase that my chorus teacher who is no longer with us um he died in 2015 if you want that story i can totally tell you because that's when i found fall out boy um he told me that music doesn't you don't find music music finds you and that has always stuck with me for some reason my brain didn't click as soon as it happened with bts this time and looking back now it's obvious of what happened so with that backstory out of the way let's go back to 2012 when my mom was diagnosed with cancer and I didn't know until a year later, which, mm, let's not get into that. So, it is 2018 now. Um, she's been fighting it for the past almost seven years. It would be seven years in May of that year. And um, she, back in November of 2017, she had gallbladder surgery which, you know, is um, a pretty standard procedure, but when your mom has a blood disorder and is suffering from cancer, you, it's a, it's, it's a possible tragedy. Um, luckily, she is, she was fine. Um, stayed in the hospital for a week, and that's another story. Um, so, by January, she's having, like, all the scans done, all the blood tests done, all of everything done to see when she can start another round of chemo. Because she obviously is like seven years going through chemotherapy and... And so... Everything comes back good. Like, nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. Um, cancer hasn't spread. Um, cancer is either... Stay, I can't remember if it stayed the same or it shrunk just a little bit from previous from its previous size, um, but it hadn't spread, which was the good thing because she had been off of chemo for a little while because of the surgery, um, even before the surgery, because they wanted to make sure that the like chemo was out of her system before they went into surgery. Um, so since that was the end of November like literally the day before Thanksgiving. They wanted to wait until she felt 100% better before starting another round of chemo. Now my mom, again, had a blood disorder. She, I can't, I'm pretty sure it was that she couldn't make white blood cells, enough white blood cells. So that's a bad thing that you can't create white blood cells. Um, so they, kept checking like every month there's a cat who you may see um he comes to comfort me you can tell i'm a little anxious um and wants attention hi adore hi golden boy no oh yes you do you see your head oh he's starting to wake up okay he wants me baby adder okay okay baby um so they're like um, so they're, like, testing her blood, they're doing all these things, making sure that her blood counts are good so they can start chemo again. January, February comes around, her blood counts are still pretty bad. March comes around, they're improving. Just about maybe a couple days before this incident happens, they are giving her the okay for next month to start talking about a new round of chemo. Literally a couple days later, she has to go to the ER for a potential stroke or heart attack, and the doctors were never clear on what it was. They couldn't figure it out, which makes me question our health system, but also reassures me that my fear of hospitals and doctors is real. Um... So, 
the day that it happened was not as scary as the first time. The first time was really scary. scary. So this time my dad took her. It was really, it was like maybe 7, 8 o'clock at night maybe. Maybe a little bit later. Maybe even earlier than that. Maybe 7. Because I know that day dad asked if I wanted Chinese and I was not having Chinese because my mom had been throwing up all day. And for those who, all of you don't know, but I have, um, I am very sensitive to people throwing up around me. Um, I have major anxiety when it happens, um, major anxiety attacks. And I was like, nope, I'm not having Chinese. So she's there for a week. Everyone is telling me that mom is sick, mom is very sick. You know, like that toddler speech, like, oh, mom's very sick. And I'm like, I'm 26 fucking years old. Tell me the truth. Day before my mom comes home, my dad obviously comes home and says, hey, your mom's coming home tomorrow. I'm like, okay. He goes upstairs to the night. I go straight into the kitchen once he's in his room. I go to the bag that he is holding, that he was carrying all week. Go to the file, the folder that's in there. Open it up and find everything that I need to know. And that is that my mom is dying. That she is now, she was in hospice and she only had maybe a couple of months left to live, if that. And honestly, it wasn't even that. Now I rehearsed this before I said it, and here come the tears. And I just remember sitting there going, this isn't happening. This is not happening, right? This isn't happening. This is just another one of those, like, fluke stroke thingies. Later, I find out that somehow the cancer had spread from where it was previously into her head. And that I was only going to have my mom for a month and like a week and a half later. I was using BTS and that's important to know that I was using BTS to help me through it. Funny enough, or I would say funny enough, but. A uh, friend, two friends of mine, their mothers also died of cancer one the year before and one just a month shy of mine. And they were my only comforts during that time. Um, talking to them and having someone else there knowing what I went, what I was going through. Because they also went through the same thing. And so... May comes. We find out about the comeback. Um, Prettier, which is, again, my first ever comeback. So I'm so super stoked and excited. And then you find out that your mom is dying. Literally. And you don't know when it, the last day is going to be with her. And I'm just, like, pushing <laughs> everything, like, just pushing everything into BTS because it's the only thing that's keeping me going. And literally, like, just a month before I got into BTS was literally Mania, was literally BTS, uh, um, Fall Out Boy's album of Mania. And I had that on repeat up until I got into BTS, and BTS was just on repeat for literally months like it just was fall out boy all over again and the one regret that I do have is that she never got to experience BTS like I did she didn't get to hear any of the songs she didn't get to see any interviews she didn't get to watch 
any of BTS run or any of their V-Lives or really anything other. Um, the only thing she saw was like two concept pictures, concept arts from Tier. And it was the black and white, and I'm pretty sure it was the denim look. I'm pretty sure it was as cute. I know it was a black and white one, I just don't remember if it was the denim one or not. And she asked me who my favorite member was, and I said it was Shaka Yoongi. And she asked me who Becca's was, and I was like, it's a cross between Tay and Jin. Um, because at the time she didn't really, she was sta she was biasing Jin, then she turned to Tay, which was opposite of me because I was standing Tay ta in the beginning and then went to Yoongi, which is a funny story in itself, um, of how he just literally pushed Tay out of the way. <laughs> as soon as I saw him with gray hair, I was like, oh, you're mine. And <laughs> told you, tears, one of ours. And, um, I asked her who stuck out, like, who stuck out to you the most when I was showing her pictures, and she goes, him, and, it was RM, it was Namjoon, and she also pointed out Hobie and Tay, but she was like, him, he, he looks kind. I <laughs> rehearsed this, not in so many words, but I rehearsed pretty much what I said, and I didn't cry during this part, <laughs> and uh, I asked her why she thought that, and she was like, I don't know, he just looks kind. <laughs> and uh, later that year, he's a speech at the UN, so I guess she was right. And she's also said that Hobie just looked cute and Taylor looked handsome, and that she actually really liked the lip ring on him. <laughs> and she understood why um, Rebecca really liked him. Although she didn't understand Sugar with me too much. <laughs> she was like, I'm, I'm surprised. I thought it was going to be him. And she points to Jimin. And I was like, oh, I like, I love Jimin. I love all the members, but he's my favorite. And she just goes, why? And he, I'm like, because he reminds me of a cat. <laughs> this was before, like, the, like, um, cat memes came out with him all the time. And, like, little meow meow and stuff like that. So then they announced the concert. And I remember telling my mom I should buy tickets for Becca and I to see them in Jersey. This was before they even announced City Field, which is my first ever concert, my first BTS concert. If you want a video about that, that shit show, that's fun. Um, <laughs> I can only make a video on that one too. Um, and she's like, Molly, Becca's not going to want to go with you. I'm like, well, you don't know that. She's like, no, I do. She's not going to want to drive you drive you two all the way to Jersey to see a concert. I'm like, you don't know that. I did tell her later this, and she goes, what? I, I would have gone. I'm like, uh, see, I know you. Apparently not. But um, good thing I never did buy those tickets because she actually had a wedding in, like, I think it was in North Carolina or something the same weekend as the concert. So we couldn't have gone to Jersey anyway. And then the comeback came, and that's all I was listening to. Ironically, it was a tear a lot of the time, and my mom wasn't even conscious for most of it. She was sleeping a lot. She wasn't eating at all. She was drinking. She still had thirst, which I... I guess it's a good thing um, that she was drinking water and Canada Dry, and which is ginger ale for those who don't have Canada Dry. Um, and 
I told her that, like, they were going to be performing on the VMAs, and she was like, oh, I want to watch. It didn't happen. I watched it. This is a great position. Watch Jungkook show his ass. <laughs> Freaking out. She was fast asleep. Which, I mean, was a good thing because she was already in paranoia at the point. And I guess, I mean, sleep is an automatic thing that happens. But she wanted to see the performance and she just wasn't conscious enough for it. And I say this with full confidence that I don't wish this on my worst enemy. I don't want them to ever see their mom or parent degrade before their eyes. Lose themselves. Have paranoia where she woke up screaming in the middle of the night. No, no, no. Don't wish that on anyone. And at that point, she wanted nothing to do with me. I think is the hardest part of all this. That she wanted nothing to do with me. Told you I'd cry. <laughs> um, four years of never doesn't get easier. <laughs> Then it never gets easier. So, tune came. Celebrating Fast Up. Trying my hardest to celebrate Fast Up. And June 13th comes the day before I said my goodbyes already. Because the one thing that one of my friends told me was to grieve early, to say your goodbyes as soon as you know there's no more days left. And I don't know what it was that day, the day before the 12th, that I said goodbye, but I did, which was a good thing, because the very next day, on the 13th, BTS anniversary, my, mom, my dad comes to my room and goes, she's gone. And obviously, I'm, you know, like, sobbing as I'm telling you the story, but at the same time, I'm also like, there's so many things that were wrong the situation that happened that no one else knows about. But behind closed doors, there were a lot of things that a lot of my friends didn't even know about. And everyone's like, oh my, your mom was like, she loved you so much. And I'm like, yeah, kind of. And as I'm learning about a lot of things, mental health wise especially in 2019 which was probably the worst year of my life especially with the mental breakdown I had in August a lot of things just made sense and that's a whole other topic of discussion that I don't think I'll ever tell the internet <laughs> you can see my cat's paws again so she passed away on BTS's anniversary and I had
had this mentality of things happen for a reason. And again, at this point, I still haven't made the connection yet of music finds you. Um, shortly after that, I did stop listening to BTS for a little while because of just, you know, hardships and grieving and everything, and I needed to fall off life for a little while. Then brings me to August 9th of 2018. I am, again, in this position of my bed, and Big Hit tweets out the final stop on the Love Yourself tour means City Field in October. Their first stadium tour. And I remember texting Becca going, oh my god, like, wake up, wake up, wake up. Because it's like 9, nine o'clock at night, I think. But they just, like, drop us out of nowhere. And I'm like, wake up, wake up. I need you to wake up. Like, I need you to wake up right now. Like, wake up, wake up. Like, because she was fast asleep. She works at a hospital and she, I think, was on call that, like, the day before. And she usually went out at, like, 5 in the morning. And... I just remember, like, trying to, like, wake her up, like, I was, I think I tweeted, like, 50 times, going, oh my god, you need to wake up, you need to wake up, BTS are coming to New York, BTS are coming to New York, they're gonna be a city field, we need to do this, we need to do this, and I actually posted on my Instagram a picture of the news, the picture of them announcing it, and I went, I'm taking this as, as a sign from my mom, that after I told her that I wanted to get tickets for Becca and I had to go see them in Jersey. That was obviously going to fall through because Becca obviously had a wedding to attend that weekend. And this was her way of repaying me seeing that BTS meant more to me than anything else in the world. So, a week later, over at Becca's house, we have a computer, two computers, or no, her computer, her laptop, my phone, her phone. Three, three out of the four don't, are like, you're 2,000 away, you're 1,000 away. Only her phone is the one that's able to get us tickets, and I'm the one who's putting in the information, getting the tickets in about, I think, a span of eight minutes. And I just remember, as soon as that went through, I looked at her and go, went, we're seeing BTS. And we both started screaming, like, insane screaming. Her mom walks in and goes, sounds like you two got tickets. And we're like, yes, we're going to go see BTS in October. And her mom turns to me. And says, your mom was here. She helped you get tickets. And she said that. I just started crying because it was true. So that brings us to October. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, 2018, and it's a BTS concert, we're down in New York, we are seeing a concert for the first time, and it's the end meant, <coughs> to speaking, and he goes, I can't exactly remember the exact wording before this, but he goes, use me, use BTS, and I just remember standing there going, oh, Realizing now, the, like, as soon as he says those words, the light bulb goes off in my head and I go, Shit, you are right again, G. You're like, come on. Even in death. For the second time. <laughs> that music finds you. Music finds you. And I just remember standing there, sobbing. Just sobbing. Because that's exactly what I was doing. I was using BTS this entire time to basically, like, alone with myself all over again, find myself again, just everything, 
I was just using BTS as, as like my safe zone. I feel a hair. I feel a hair. Um, and I didn't realize that I was doing it until that very concert. And every time I watch the City Field concert, I always start crying during that part, during the during his meds the most because it's exactly what I was doing. I was using BTS. I was using them to be happy again, like to not worry, to have a fun experience in life again. And just like Fall Out Boy, I wanted her, her mom's death to just like not fade into existence because that would be rude, but like have something come out of it. Just have something something happen and that's how I always am I'm like always looking for like I believe in like the afterlife and like reincarnation and like I believe things happen for a reason so me not listening to BTS in 2015 to being reintroduced to them in 2018 if I actually got into BTS in 2015, I don't even know if I would have been listening to them at that time because by the time Fall Out Boy came into my life, that's all I was listening to. Like, that was all I was listening to was alternative rock and pop punk and quote-unquote emo music, whatever. Like, it was Fall Out Boy, Panic of the Disco, My Chemical Romance from December 7th, December 27th. 2015 until I got into BTS in February of 2018 like even if I was listening to them then I might not have been listening to them again after that so like his words still haunt me every time I like to think of it of use me use BTS I'm just like I do that every single day now June like I I absolutely adore BTS, and nothing will ever break me of BTS. Well, they're whenever they do end BTS, that probably will break me, but, like, I will always follow them, I will always support them, I will always support solos, I will always support whatever they plan to do in the next 10, 20, 30 years, whatever they plan on doing because I feel like I owe them after all they've done for me. The same way I feel like I owe Fall Out Boy. The same way I feel like I owe My Chemical Romance, which I feel like I owe them. And I feel like supporting them for years, I don't, like, this is literally my fourth year standing with them. Longest group that I've stamped since I got into K-pop and you guys know I'm a multi but BTS is always going to be my number one no one can replace BTS no one will replace them ever in my heart and, and no one really understands like if you didn't go through something like that you wouldn't understand what I'm saying because it just doesn't make sense like it doesn't like I understand people like say these things and it's like oh like I know a lot of people that are like oh music saved me music saved me like this band saved me this artist saved me I never really fully understood that until I got into Fall Boy and BTS and one day I hope <laughs> they have another collaboration one like down the road because I would absolutely adore it maybe with Yoongi maybe with Jin Jin would do well in one of those in a song with all but he really would um they mean so much to me and I know people are gonna be like that's a stupid reason that it means so much to you and I know people are gonna be like oh you cry too much that's stupid and I know people are gonna be rude in the comments about this and I don't care because 
guess what? I am in this BTS shit for life. I am every name under the sun if you hate ARMY. I'm a little seven. I'm purple blood. I don't really give a shit what you think. Because BTS mean everything to me. And I honestly don't know where I'd be. I know I wouldn't be like... I don't think I would have like done anything to myself. I don't know if I would have been in this position. Where I can say that... I'm actually happy. I know it doesn't look it <laughs> with the tears and the really very used tissue, but I'm happy. I am really happy currently in my life. Um, the relationship status is uh, sad, <laughs> but I just wanted to put my story out there to see if anyone else has a similar story or just needs comfort knowing that someone has gone through absolute shit and BTS helped them through that period of their life and I'm always gonna be here for BTS no matter what I, I know one day they will leave and that will be an extremely sad day. But I'm always going to be here. Because, again, BTS means so much to me. And I'm not leaving. <laughs> so. I hope you guys actually watch this, like, going to be like 40 minute video after I do a little bit of editing. Um, I hope you guys watched it through the entirety um <laughs> I hope you understood my story and I hope you don't mind the cuts that are gonna be throughout because I started crying really really hard at one point and you guys don't need to see me ugly cry <laughs> so I hope everyone has a great day I hope everyone enjoyed the rest of this year because I know I did um and I will see you guys in the next video bye